Welcome to Steelers Today. My name is Megan Payton. A lot of news on Big Ben's thoughts on TJ Watt's contract. We're going to break all of that down for you. But first, all we ask of you guys is to subscribe to this channel. Please stay up to date. We will be posting many videos regarding Steelers content. So we want you guys to never go misinformed. Now, Big Ben had a lot to say on TJ Watt's contract deal, and it's it's a good guy to have on your side. Big Ben is the highest paid player in Pittsburgh Steelers history. So when he talked to the media today about TJ Watt's contract, it kind of spiced things up. He said that I think TJ Watt should get whatever the heck he wants. He's arguably the best player in the game right now, not just on defense in general. He's the defensive player of the year, Everyone in this locker room understands and knows that. He should understand and know that as well. The problem is when you negotiate a contract, it's not always two sides. When the bosses and higher-ups are in charge, there's only so much you can do. So the latest is that Watt is seeking a deal that could make him the highest-paid defensive player in the league. Right now, though, he's set to make $10.9 million in the last year of his rookie deal. Unfortunately, the Steelers right now, if it stays place, the Steelers could put a franchise tag on him in 2022, which means that he would not be able to go to free agency. And so I understand Watt's hold up right now. I understand why he's not wanting to fully participate playing games. It's because he thinks that he deserves more. And when you look at the highest paid edge rushers in the NFL, he's way off from these guys. Joey Bo Bosa's at 27 mil a year. Miles Garrett's at 25. Khalil Max at 23.5. Demarcus Lawrence at 21 and Frank Clark at 20.8. And so does he compare? I think he does. The stats are in it itself. I mean, he had 53 tackles, 15 sacks. And so these other guys are amazing too, but he's right there with them. So I understand on his side what's happening. So what's the holdup on Pittsburgh side of things? The holdup is that Pittsburgh's not wanting to give the amount of guaranteed money that Watt wants. The Steelers are actually one of the few teams in the league that don't guarantee money beyond the first year. So really what's happening is they don't want to set this new precedent for Watt because if they give him the guaranteed money, then years later, there's going to be a new guy that's saying, well, you did this for Watt. Why aren't you doing this for me? So they're going to have to get creative if they want Watt to be happy and if they want to have this amazing player on their roster. I think that Big Ben had it right. He also brought his own contract deal into this. He said that he actually ended up taking less money this year. Roethlisberger has earned over $253 million the 17 seasons that he's been with the Steelers. In 2019, he signed a two-year contract with a $37.5 million signing bonus. And this year, he decided to kind of take one for the team. His deal is worth $15 million, so it is less than what it would originally be. But he said that one of the reasons I took less money was for guys like him to get paid and he needs to get paid. He deserves every penny that he wants and asks for. TJ Watt is that guy who should get whatever he wants. So I like that Big Ben kind of brought his own thoughts into this. He's saying I took less money for guys like him and he's not getting to see that. So he continues on in the press conference saying we all feel bad for TJ Everyone knows how bad he wants to be out there. The guy was here every single day and probably didn't need to be. He's working and busting his butt. He should get taken care of. And like he said, Watt is still holding out, but he hasn't missed any practices. He's been at all the things since training camp. Yes, no, he's not doing contact drills. He didn't play in preseason games, but he's wa he's wanting to be there. He's right now limited to individual kind of conditioning workouts. I think he's just showing like, hey, I'm not going to risk getting injured unless there's some deal in place. But let me know what you guys think. Do you guys think that TJ Watt will get this deal finished and will he play in week one? If you think so, type P for play and if not, type S for sit. 
I I think that he will play, but then also the problem becomes if he doesn't get this deal done soon enough, he's not going to be ready for week one. So will Mike Tomlin maybe sit him anyway? We talked about that previously. I think it's going to have to happen soon. But like we said, he had an amazing year in 2020 with 53 tackles, 23 tackles for loss, 15 sacks, and 41 QB hits. He deserves to get paid. We are moving on to some other rumors and news but first again please subscribe to this channel we want to keep giving you guys all Steelers content but we need our engagement up we need you guys to like this video we need you to subscribe to the channel moving on there were some interesting rumors going on with Cam Newton could he possibly find a home in Pittsburgh well Newton was released from the Patriots August 31st and with Big Ben being 39 could the Steelers maybe make a move for him? I think that there's a chance. I think that it's hard because Cam doesn't necessarily want that backup position. He wants to be a starter, but maybe being under a guy like Big Ben, who you know is a little bit older, probably not going to be in the league much more. So maybe that could be a spot. Well, Juju was on pro football talk and he had a little bit to say about it. He just said, for myself in our locker room, there's no talks about that. I know Cam's situation is tough for him, but at the end of the day, just focusing on the guys who are in the locker room, and just wishing Cam nothing but the best. He's a great player. He's definitely going to get picked up. What do you guys think? Should the Steelers sign Cam Newton? Type Y for yes or type N for no? I like it. I like a guy like that kind of being under someone like Big Ben. I think it'll he'll learn a lot more. He could possibly improve. And yet it's also a little bit humbling, but not humiliating. We'll see what happens. But Cam had, you know, his year last year, it wasn't terrible, but it also wasn't the old Cam that we've seen. He had an average of 66.8, I believe, um, completion percentage. Uh, 69 and rush for, you know, he had 2,657 yards, eight touchdowns, 10 interceptions. So like I said, it's not an amazing year, but it's also still not a, you don't deserve a roster spot anywhere kind of year. Let's take a look at what's going on in the QB depth chart right now for the Steelers. Obviously we know big Ben is going to be the number one guy. And it looks like Mason Rudolph kind of won that second quarterback position. I know him and Dwayne Haskins had a little bit of a quarterback competition for that second spot. It seems to me as Mason Rudolph has one that um, and obviously we've seen a lot out of him back in 2019 when Big Ben was out for 10 games and Mason Rudolph didn't have again he didn't play bad he had a 62.2 completion percentage had 1,765 yards 13 touchdowns nine interceptions isn't great but for a guy young like him back in 2019 I think that he's improved I think that he's you know, been under Mike Tomlin for a bit, kind of watching Big Ben. I think that he is a good number two. Is Cam Newton better? Probably. And then on Dwayne Haskins' side of things, he had a 61.4 completion percentage last year with Washington, 1,439 yards, five touchdowns, and seven interceptions. So we'll see if Cam actually does end up in Pittsburgh. I know it's a long shot. I know every team in the NFL right now is kind of trying to feel, hey, could we have this guy come on as our second as our second guy? But does Cam actually want that place? We'll see what happens there. But there has been some new roster additions to the practice squad. We've got Henry Mondo. We've got Tyler Vons and Delonte Scott. These are three guys that have been added up from the practice squad. Henry Mondo is a guy that he's a big dude. He's 6'4, he's 280 pounds, and he's, I think, someone that they can use if, you know, again, if injuries happen, if they need kind of some more depth. Um, Tyler Vaughn's, he had a great year at USC, uh, wide receiver, but he was kind of with the Colts back in, you know, the early beginning of the, after the off season, after the draft, they kind of signed him as an undrafted free agent. Then he gets released to now up with the Steelers. I think, again, that's just a good guy to have in case, you know, you need to move some of the practice squad guys up to the active roster. 
Lastly, we have Delonte Scott, who signed with the Green Bay Packers as an undrafted free agent following the 2020 NFL draft. He played at SMU. He appeared in 40 games, had 97 tackles. And I think that, again, he could be someone to help out just in the depth. But get your vote below. We want to know right now, what do you think the Steelers record is going to be predicted in the comments? There's a lot of things going on in this Steelers offense and defense, a lot of contract negotiations, a lot of drama. So how do you think this will impact the season? Let me know your predictions.